What is up guys, it's Ollie from the Java Hub and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how we can navigate our map using uh, arrow keys or whatever or you can put them in, we're basically going to make a method so it's easy for you to control navigation of your map and you can then access that method from anywhere, it doesn't have to be from user input, it can be maybe if the character drops below a certain height then the map can scroll up or whatever like that. So we've got this really nice map printed out here using our tiles. Um, so we can't actually do anything with this at the moment. So even if we had a character doing something, it would be pretty useless. So right here at the bottom of our world class, uh, we're just going to create a new method called public void uh, nav navigate map. Let's call it that. And it's going to take an integer called, we'll just call it nav for ease, and nav is going to be the integer at which it should move. Now, we're going to do something a little bit sneaky. Um, it's really simple, but not a lot of people take advantage of the fact that we can use switch statements and variables to represent uh, different things in Java. So, for example, I'll just add a comment here about navigation. And then we can make some um, static final integers. Uh, we can call, we're going to call them pan up. That can just be equal to zero. Pan down can equal one. Pan left can equal two. And pan right can equal three. And it doesn't even matter what numbers they equal because because we've set the integers to final, Java knows that these are the only time they're ever going to be initialized. Therefore, we can use them in switch statements. So if I come down here, all we need to do is say switch and say, so in the case of it panning up, pan up, in the case of it panning down, pan down, etc. And in this uh, parameter here, the user will enter something like world.pan down or world.pan up, uh, etc. And that it just makes it super easy to do methods like that. So we'll just add a switch statement right away. Switch the nav. Uh, we're testing the nav that the user is going to enter. And they would they would never, technically they could enter just like 0, 1, 2, or 3, but it would be kind of silly to try and remember those. So we just will access them later on by doing world dot pan up, pan down, and whatever. So we'll just put the default case straight away and we can say system out print line and if the default case is being accessed it means the user entered a number that's not recognized by the thing by our switch statement so default case entered doing nothing there we go that's good enough and then we can break so in the case of panning up, we can do something and break. In the case of panning down, we'll do something then break. In the case of panning left, do something, break. And the case of panning right, do something and break. And bear in mind, if you use try and use variables in switch statements, they have to be final. If these variables weren't final, this would cause an error saying that they must that they could be subject to change and they that's not allowed in switch statements so just make them final make sure that they're final so they can't be initialized ever again uh so now yeah so what do we want to do if i come up here to our draw image as you can see we draw our image at the location of the rec the blocks rectangle x and y so we can just leave the image alone for now we don't need to touch the images and in each case we can make a for loop for and because we don't need to touch the image, we can just access the rectangle straight off. And in case you haven't seen one of these before, it's an enhanced for loop. We can say rectangle, just call it R, and then we put a colon and enter the name of the array we want to loop through. So now this for loop is going to loop through every entry in the blocks array, and every time it loops, that the rectangle, every time it loops, the rectangle in that entry of blocks is going to be represented as R. So we can just put, if the map wants to pan up, then we want to minus from the y-axis. So we can just say ry minus minus. And then we can copy this for the pan down, 
pan left and pan right. Um, for panning down, we add to the y-axis. Panning left, we minus from the x. And panning right, we add to the x. And that was just super simple. That's basically done now. We can just call this from somewhere else. If I come back into game panel, uh, we've already got our key adapter set up. So let's just do this the right way. If e dot get key code is equal to um, key event dot vk underscore left, and I'm going to copy this four times. Or well, actually, I'll do it first. So if the user presses left, we want to say world, which is our world object here. We say world dot navigate map, and then where do we want to navigate to? Well, we can just say world. Um, not accessing our variable, but accessing the class world using the capital W. Then, once we press a dot, press the full stop, we can see all the options come up, and we can just select pan left, and that's going to be recognised by our switch statement, and it's going to pan our map left for this for us. So we'll just copy this four times, change this to right. Let's put the caps lock on, make things easier. Pan right, pan right, um, up pan up and down pan down and that is it so let's run this as you can see we've got a map here and we can now press our up and down arrow keys and our left and right arrow keys to navigate the map around as we like now this isn't optimized at the moment because as you can see it moves quite slowly you could add um, you could add, add like one or two, you could add more than one to it to make it move faster, but that may make it look jittery. So we're going to be doing it slightly better in the future. Uh, we're going to be putting a method in the game update section so it can be accessed by a thread so it can move nice and smoothly with the rest of everything. But that's pretty much good enough for now. So now that that's done, or now that I've shown you how to do that, uh, I'm actually not going to keep this here because we probably don't want the user to move the whole map with the arrow keys. We probably want the map to move when the user passes uh, like different points and things like that. And actually, let's just... Um, hmm, I'm just thinking. Um, Alright, no, we'll do that. We'll do that in the next tutorial. Alright then, guys, thank you for watching. Um, please subscribe if you want to, if you're enjoying this series. I really appreciate all your support. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments, or if you've got bigger questions which involves your code, then go to the javahub.net slash forums, uh, make an account if you haven't already, and just feel free to post your code in the help section. And there you will be offered help by myself and various other members of the forum. And hopefully we can get your problems solved as quick as possible. Uh, I also have live chat set up. Um, at the moment it's a bit random when I go on, but if you go on the forums and the forums news, uh, the little banner in the top right hand side, if it says like something like I'm on live chat now or come come join me on live chat, uh, I'll, I'll literally update that as I go along as I'm on live chat. So if you see it saying that, I will actually be on live chat at that time. So uh, yeah, just bear that in mind if you want to come and speak to me on live chat. If you need like personal help with something, it might be easier to get face-to-face uh, -face help. Um, but that's pretty much it for this tutorial, guys. Uh, thank again, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Please subscribe.